All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, in recent videos, I told you that we had purchased a uh, food uh, freeze dryer. And there was a two and a half month waiting list that we were put on, basically, um, because the demand for these uh, freeze dryers was so, so high. Um, so we just got notified today that it has been shipped. So we're hoping to get it in a few days or within a week anyways. Um, so, but freeze drying has opened up a whole new avenue for us as far as uh, storing food. Um, we won't be doing canning that much except for tomato sauce. I love, I love growing my own tomatoes and processing my own uh, tomato sauce. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a link to that up here. So other than canning my tomato sauce, we won't be canning much of anything else. We uh, we're basically going to be doing all freeze drying. So anything that we have excess from the garden, we're going to be freeze drying it. So that's a wonderful thing because if you know anything about freeze drying, once you freeze dry it, put them in uh, mylar bags, take the oxygen out of those. We, we got a uh, vacuum sealer, a chamber, I'm sorry, a chamber vacuum sealer. Uh, I'll put a video to that up here. Um, that we're going to use to seal the uh, freeze-dried food and it'll stay that way for 25 to 30 years and that is awesome. Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you this meat slicer we purchased. Um, because of that freeze dryer, like I said, now we can do a lot of food storing now. We are not only going to be slicing meat with this uh, meat slicer here, but also our vegetables. Zucchini, eggplants, carrots, um, potatoes, you know, whatever. Um, we're able to now slice all our excess um, fruits and vegetables, well mostly vegetables, uh, because in the summer we produce too much food and we cannot possibly eat it all. And we end up giving it away or it just goes to waste. So um, with this now, we're able to slice all our vegetables, uh, freeze dry them, put them in mylar, mylar bags, and they'll be good for 25, 30 years. So this has opened up a whole new avenue for us for storing food, and I'm so excited. Um, so today what we're gonna be doing is making jerky. We got chicken and some beef uh, brisket. Now, we purchased a big old brisket. It was like 15 pounds. There was a lot of fat on it on the outside, but I thought I just you know cut that off. I didn't think there was more on the inside, uh, but I ended up taking off. I think it was six and a half pounds of fat off this uh, brisket. Um, probably not a good choice to, choice of meat for me to buy that. It, it looked. I, I figured this would be a huge piece of meat. I can make a ton of jerky off from that for my for my dogs basically. Um, and we ended up taking off six and a half pounds of fat off the 15 pound brisket. So that left uh, roughly eight and a half pounds of meat there. Uh, what was the price? I forgot what the price per pound was, but it ended up after we removed the fat and we realized we had eight and a half pounds of meat, it was like $4 a, a pound basically for that meat if you discard, you know, take the fat off. So that was a little pricey. <laughs> so we would have been better off buying probably, a, what do they call it, bottom round or top round steak or whatever they call it. It's a big hunk of meat. Um, that's usually in the $3 range, somewhere in that area. Uh, three something anyway, last I checked. And of course, that could change any day now, right? So anyways, what I was looking for is the cheapest uh, per pound hunk of meat, the biggest hunk I can find. And um, I thought the brisket would work, but it's a little pricey uh, once you take the uh, fat off. All right, so we're gonna be doing that today and uh, I haven't used this yet, so we're gonna try it out. Uh, some of the chicken breast that we have is completely thawed out and some of it's frozen. So we're going to see how this slices the thawed out meat versus the, I'm not going to put the frozen meat through there because it's, it'll be too rough, but
but the semi-thought out meat should be okay. Because, um, I mean, typically these are designed for deli meat. So you put this big hunk of deli meat on there and it's pretty tough meat, you know, so it'll slice nice. Whereas a chicken breast that's, that's thawed out already is pretty soft and I'm not sure how that's gonna cut. So we will see, so let's try it out. All right, so quickly before we get started, let me show you some of the features on this and how it works. Um, obviously, you're gonna put your, the meat here and then this slides back and forth, of course, so you can slot, uh, cut your meat. This here is a 10 inch blade, very, very sharp. Um, this here is the sharpening uh, for the blade here. You can sharpen the blade with this. Now, if you need to sharpen the blade, this comes off right here, and right underneath here, you're gonna see two stones. One, this stone here, will cut the angle on the blade, and this stone here will take the burr off the grind you just did. So it was on like this, what we need to do is flip it this way. So this will cut the back of the uh, blade, and this will cut the very face, and it'll take care of that burr. So you put it on like that, and then you tighten it down like that. All right, you can see here after I flip this 180 and tighten it down, this stone here is facing the back of the blade. This is the blade here. And what you want, I'm not gonna do it because it's a brand new machine, it doesn't need sharpening. But what you wanna do is turn the machine on, this will be turning, and you wanna push on this stone up against the wheel for about 30 to 40 seconds. Just hold it up against there. You don't have to push too hard, just push it up against the wheel like that. After about 30 seconds, let go. This wheel here pushes right up against the face, okay? That will get rid of that burr that this wheel caused. So after you've sharpened the back of the uh, blade for about 30 seconds, let it go. And then you wanna push both of them at the same time for about three to four seconds as it's spinning. What that will do is keep the back sharp and take that burr that was on the edge caused by this wheel. But if you just do this one after this, you might end up pushing that burr back the other way. So after you sharpen this one for 30 seconds, hit them both for about three to four seconds and that'll take that burr off and keep that edge really nice and sharp. And then on this side here, you're gonna have your on and off switch here. And this here, you can adjust the thickness of the whatever you're slicing. All right, so we are ready to get started here. We have some chicken breast we're gonna do. We have some that's thawed out pretty good and some is semi thawed out. So the first thing we need to do here is adjust the blade. We're gonna come over here where the adjustment is and we're gonna put it on number five. And that will equate to about a quarter inch thickness is what we want to make the jerky. Um, so we wanna get our chicken breast. And which one here? This one is the thought out one. Let's try this one here. Now I'm gonna do it lengthwise. Now this here has got little spikes on it here, you can see. Um, on both sides, on the front and on the bottom to hold whatever you're slicing. And uh, now we'll turn it on, let's try it out. Wow, not bad at all. And this is a completely thawed chicken breast. So I'm gonna be laying it out here. My wife's gonna put it on the, uh, de the dehydrator racks and we're gonna put them in the dehydrator. Nice, I like it. Not too bad at all. 
Now, I keep hearing, and I was looking at some of the reviews, when you're down to the very end, you're gonna be left with a hunk of meat. So, what I'm thinking is, if I can't cut that hunk of meat, I might end up just pounding it. Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. And shut the machine off. And I'm left with this here. <laughs> All right, guys, I have here a chicken breast that's pretty much frozen here. Okay, we're going to try it out. You have to push a little harder to see how that comes out. Not too bad. You got to push a little harder when it's near the middle of the meat, the center part, but it's it's kind of frozen, of course. See that? But it gets through there. Yeah, so I would rec definitely recommend doing your meat. So I would definitely recommend cutting it when it's semi-frozen. Yeah, it cuts much better. Shut the machine off. And like I said, that last piece that's left that you can't usually do, we should just um, beat it flat and it'll work out just fine. All right guys, we did all our chicken and we got uh, our dehydrator is full and that'll be ready tomorrow. Uh, how long does it usually take for the meat? 16 hours. About 16 hours. Uh, so that'll be done tomorrow. Um, we got plenty more to put in there tomorrow also. We're gonna keep these in the fridge. We have some uh, that brisket to do now. I took as much fat as I could off. Um, and we're gonna do the brisket now. And that'll be, of course, we'll put that in the uh, dehydrator tomorrow also. Now, obviously what works best when the chicken breasts are frozen. Frozen to where the outside is somewhat soft, but the inside is still frozen. Uh, it does go through there. You'll feel some resistance, but it goes through there really good. And that is the best because if it's completely thawed out, the meat is too soft and it gets stuck either start sticking to this plate here or it starts wanting to go underneath any little nook and cranny, whatever. It'll start going underneath there uh, and it makes a mess. So better to be frozen or semi-frozen, but not thawed at all. So these, these here are frozen, but the outside is just starting to get thawed, but it's, it's solid on the inside. So, well, you might have to do without this guy here. Yeah, it's too big. So keep that out of the way. And I'll have to actually just hold the meat. And once it gets down to a certain uh, thickness, then I can use this to push it the rest of the way. All right, let's see how this works. Oh, now I have to set. I forgot to set it back to five. I, I did wipe the machine down, 
So I'm putting it back to number five, which equates to a quarter inch. And that's what we want. And here we go. There is some resistance, but it's nice. See, it's still frozen. Yeah, this is a little bit too frozen. So you want to thaw it out for a little while, but not completely thaw it out. Yeah, this is probably a little bit too frozen, but that looks really nice. Maybe I can use this now. Yeah, I can use this. Yeah, it's just too frozen. Let's let's let yeah, let's let this one thaw out a little more because it's a little bit too too frozen. But have you noticed that motor has not stalled? This this unit here has got the 340 watt motor. They have other ones on Amazon um, that are 240 watt motors. So that extra 100 watts for this um, really makes a difference. It doesn't even stall it or anything. Which one was it? I think this one might be better. Let's try this one. It's a little thinner this too. One, this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this one's definitely uh, more thawed. Let's try this again. Oh yeah. All right, it's like working at a deli now. So semi-thawed, goes through there like butter, but yet it's still firm, is what we're trying to uh, shoot for. This guy here was a solid block of ice. We don't want that. So semi-frozen, it's still firm, and like I just showed you here, Cuts through there like butter. Uh oh, there we go. It's, uh, I have to make it a little bit shorter. Now I can probably use it. No. A little bit more. Uh, now it should work. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to put that over there. Put that there. All right, now it should work nice. Get this out of here. Yeah. Okay, now that last piece was very thin. The little teeth couldn't um, grab it, so we shut the blade off. And the very last piece, it's not that bad. I can uh, use a meat tenderizer or a hammer and uh, beat it till it's about a quarter inch thick. The rest though, I mean, that's beautiful.
This piece here is still a little bit too hard. We're going to let that one thaw out a little bit more and uh, finish this up. Oops. So now we made a video with the uh, making dog jerky is what we're doing here basically. We don't buy those, those, those treats at the store for $34. What pound bag was those? You remember? But anyways, it was like $35 to $40 for a bag of treats. Uh, what were they? 64 ounce, four pounds. So a four pound bag was 30 something dollars. And we bought that big old brisket, 15 pounds, which ended up being eight and a half pounds for $34. So we doubled our meat compared to those things. Plus those treats at the store, they're full of artificial crap and they're just junk. And they're not good for your dogs. This is real meat, this is what they should be eating. Um, home, homemade home cooking <laughs> for the dogs. Our dogs are on a raw meat diet anyways. They eat chicken, beef mostly, uh, eggs, things like that. Um, and they're very, very healthy because of it. No problems with our dogs. We had problems in the beginning for the first year of their, uh, of their life. Uh, we fed them uh, regular commercial dog food and they were sick. My other dog, one of them had uh, elbow hygroma, which is like uh, your elbow swelled up like a tennis ball was crammed up in there. Um, my other dog, the male, was, uh, had all kinds of skin problems and he was very mean. He didn't want to play, so he was obviously sick. We changed their diet, put them on a raw uh, meat diet and boom. The uh, Mia's um, elbow hygroma completely shrank and it disappeared. And uh, Toby, uh, the male, he started becoming playful, wanted to play all the time, was, in a, was always in a good mood. Unbelievable. Just th that commercial dog food is garbage. Stay away from it if you can. Try and feed them uh, a raw meat diet. So like I said, just buy the cheapest meat will do. And the cheapest hamburger, the cheapest cuts of beef, uh, the cheapest chicken you can find, uh, bones and all, for the chicken that is. We feed them the bones, although not all the time, but make sure you feed them the bone because they got the bone marrow in there and it's full of nutrition in there for them. The bone, chicken bones, when they're raw, when they eat them, in their stomach, it becomes all rubbery and it, and it, and it completely um, digests. Um, and it doesn't splinter like cooked chicken bones. Don't ever give your dog cooked chicken bones because they'll splinter sharp and it could get stuck in their throat. Whereas the raw doesn't do that. We feed them raw uh, bones and meat all the time and they've never had a problem in the last couple of years, okay? So that's the best for them. That's why we're doing this. This machine is, again, for both, for us cutting meat and our vegetables for our food dehydrator. Um, so I showed you some of the features already, the, how you sharpen it, 340 watt motor on this. Now they have other ones on Amazon that are almost identical to this, but they're 240 watt. Uh, personally, I wouldn't go with it. I would go with the 340 watt. I was cutting through this solid block of meat here, which is solid frozen ice, um, struggling with it, and the motor was not slowing down. That's how powerful it is. So that is a very good feature. Um, 10 inch blade, 340 watt motor. You can sharpen it, easy to dismantle. Um, this down here, you just unscrew this here. Let me just show you real quick, very simple. This just comes off. You can wash this in the sink. I wouldn't put it in the dishwasher, but wash it in the sink with hot soapy water. Um, be careful this blade. Set this back, when you're ready to clean it, set this back to zero. So you're flush here, okay? And, um, Wipe everything down with nice soapy water. This plate comes off by screwing the uh, back screw here. There's three screws under here.
that you'll be able to take off the entire 10 inch blade. I would get, I would put some, either some good leather gloves on or some of those cut resistant um, uh, gloves. I'll put them in the description below uh, to take this off. It will cut you, okay? There's no other way to really hold this but where the cutting edge is. Um, wipe everything down with soapy uh, hot water and uh, then you'll be good to go. And that's it, and now you're back in business. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put a link again in the description to this um, meat slicer here and the uh, dehydrator. Now the dehydrator, this exact model, they still sell it, but it's under a different name now. Um, so I'm gonna put it in the description and um, along with this machine here. And that's it guys. All right, so thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video.